Hello and welcome to the ninth video in a series of game development tutorials on how to make your own 3D Endless Runner game in Unity. In this tutorial we'll cover infinite generation of our segments. Remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload. Feel free to leave a comment or drop a like. I also have a Patreon page where you can help be a part of this channel and you'll find all the scripts and assets to this series there too, along with plenty of other things. You can also now join as a free member. And now, on with the tutorial. So last time we had our little sections in place where they would generate accordingly here. But what we want to do now is we want to go one step further and generate them infinitely and randomly. So in order to do that, I want this section here that Timmy is currently on to be permanently the starting seg uh, segment or section, whatever. So what I'm going to do is hold control, press D on it, so it duplicates. And I'm going to rename it as start segment. I'm just going to move it up above Timmy. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it over here out the way. I'm also going to turn on the second segment and move it over here. And I'm going to turn on the third segment and once again move it over here. Now it doesn't matter if they intersect each other, not at all. They're never going to be seen by the camera because Timmy is facing this way where my mouse is moving so he will never see what is behind him. What we do need to do is we need to modify the script that we wrote last time, which will allow us to create some randomness and infinity to it. So let's head into that script that we wrote last time. And we're now going to modify a couple of things in here. Uh, let's start by adding in a couple of variables. So the first variable is going to be uh, the Z or Z position. So if you remember, the section goes along the z or z axis so you can see that segment start segment is currently at zero the first segment will be generated at 50 and then 100 and then 150 and then 200 and so on so we need to make sure that we do it in those multiples of 50. so let's go back to our script and what we'll do is we will serialize field here so serialize field and the variable is going to be an integer, and we'll call it z pos, short for z position. We'll make it equal to 50. The reason being is because the first instance of a section being placed is going to be at position 50, because the starting segment is at position 0. Next, what we need to do is we need to create a bool. So we need to know, true or false, are we currently creating a section? If we are, we don't want to be creating another one just yet. So once again, let's serialize field. And we will have this as a bool because like I said, it needs to be true or false. And we'll just call it creating segment. And we'll make it false by default. Uh, next variable we will have as an integer. So this particular variable is going to allow us to create section 0, 1, or 2. And not 1, 2, and 3. Keep 0, 1, 2 in mind just for now. So we'll have that as int. And we'll have it as segment num. Short for segment number. Uh, we'll have that as... In fact, no, we don't need to have it as anything by default. We'll just leave it as it is. Uh, next thing to do, let us change uh, this top variable where it says game object, put some square brackets on the end of that. And what this will do is it will allow us to create an array. So rather than have segment map one, two, three, four, five, we can actually have it all inside one single variable, therefore saving resources. So let's now get rid of all the others. And let's change this. Let's just have this as um, let's just have this as segment because it's not really a map anymore, is it? It's just a segment. So with this coroutine down here now, segment gem, what we need to do is we now need to create a random number to generate. So the first line of code is going to be se uh, segment num equals random dot range 
and inside the brackets we need to put the lowest possible and the highest possible plus one. So in this case we want zero and three. So let me explain. We have three segments that can be generated as zero, one or two and again keep those numbers in mind they will make sense a little later on in this tutorial. The reason we've put three is because three will never be generated in this random range. It'll either be zero, one, or two. It never generates that last number. It always generates as a maximum the one below it. So for example, if you had a range of zero and 10, then only zero to nine would be generated from the random range. Next, what we need to do is we need to instantiate an object. And what do we mean by that? It means duplicate one of the objects and place it in a set position. So instantiate, and in brackets, we then need to say what we want to instantiate. So in this case, it's segment. And in square brackets, you can see it already is predicting what we should have here, segment num. And again, keep this in mind, it will all become apparent and then you'll have an aha moment in a couple of minutes time. Now we need to place it in a position and we need to use a vector three here. So because we only need to change it on the Z or Z position, it's always going to be zero on the X, zero on the Y, and the Z is either going to be 50, 100, 150, as I said earlier. So we can say new vector three, and in brackets, zero on the X, zero on the Y, and then Z pos. Close bracket. And then you can already see it is predicting we're going to say quaternion.identity. In other words, which way is it? How, where is it? How is it being put there? That's all this line really means. It's just generating that new game object and placing it where we tell it to. So after that, we need to then say, right, well, we've placed that object, so we need to increase the Z position ready for the next piece to be placed. So we can say Z pos plus equals 50, semicolon. Now we need to wait. So what we'll do is we will leave this line of code in here, but we'll change it from 10 to three. And I'm going to get rid of the last three lines of code. And instead of those, I'm going to put one simple line of code to say that the creating segment is equal to false again. And you're probably thinking, Jimmy, we haven't even set it as true. That is absolutely correct. You'll see how this all works in just a moment. So creating segment equals false semicolon. So that is the coroutine rewritten using roughly what we had before, but you creating it in a different way. So now we have infinite generation and also randomly rather than just placing the objects that we currently have. So how do we get all of this working? Well, we need to change the start method to an update method. So, so we can just type that, void update. And instead of start coroutine segment gen, that's not gonna work. All that's going to do is continuously generate um, the coroutine to start. And what it will do is it will probably crash the game out because it's continuously trying to place new objects, you know, thousands in a second. What we need to do is we need to control that. And we need an if statement to say, well, if we're already creating a section, don't try and create another until we say so. So in this case, we say if, you can see, creating segment equals false, open curly bracket. And the first thing we do here is we say creating segment equals true. So that will prevent it happening once again. And now this coroutine line, so start coroutine, you need to take out of there and place it inside the if statement and save the script. So let's quickly go over what is actually going to happen here. So when the script starts, we're going to say, is the creating segment equal to false? It is. OK, so let's set it as true. So it prevents the if statement from running again. But we instantly start the coroutine which comes down to here, means we generate a section that we're going to state. It then places the section. It then adds to the position. It waits for three seconds and then says, yep, okay, we're back to false. So then it loops back to here. 
So it's just an infinite looping process. So let's head back into Unity. And if we go to level controls, you should see this looks a little bit different now. We've got a little arrow next to segment. So if we click that and then change this to three, you can see element zero, element one, element two. And remember earlier when I said zero, one, and two? Well, zero means segment one, one means segment two, two means segment three. It may seem a little tricky to comprehend at first, but it makes sense uh, you know, a little later on down the line anyway. So what we'll do is we will drag and drop segment into zero, segment into one, and segment into two. So if you have many more segments, you have 20, you would just do the same for each one. And I'm pretty sure I mentioned it earlier in the series as well, when I said about them all being the same, it's useful for us when we call them a little later on. So what should happen now? Well, as soon as we press play, we should see some generation infinitely occurring all the way across our screen. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drag and drop the game view there so we can see from the sky in real time what's happening with this. So let's press play. And as soon as it starts, we should see the first section generate, and then we should see the second, and then the third, and it'll just keep going and going and going. And you can see that some sections, yep, it's had three in a row that's the same, four in a row that's the same, but don't worry, it's only because we've only got a couple of sections, you know, it's one in three chance. But you can see that, yes, they are different. See, that one and that one is different. It's just randomly generating zero, one, or two each time. And you can see that right here. And you can see the Z position constantly increasing over here as well. So if we were to leave this to its own devices, it would just generate infinitely. It would keep going and going and going and going, and it would not stop until it crashed. Yes, I know there's ways of getting around this. Uh, in, in this case, there's going to be no way to call any of these out, but we'll get around that later on in the series because we don't want to have thousands of these particular game objects. If Timmy's already run past them, there's no point keeping them. But that's something we'll deal with. So. Next tutorial, what we'll do is we'll add a little bit of fun to this game. We're going to add in some collectibles. So we'll have some like spinning collectible coins uh, in the game. Something to do. So remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series. And I will see you next time.